I'll give you a chance to respond, but we've had someone join the chat. Who is bright side here? <laughs> oh, I, I, hello. I, I heard there was an Oompa Loompa meeting going on, so I wanted to join in. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> we've got Meadow. This is the uh, under four feet tall club, right? Uh, did I jump into the right stream? <laughs> I, I think you're here. Did you wear the costume? Yes, I did. I did. Not perfect. I dress as a leprechaun, perfect. so I think I should fit in. <laughs> Excellent. What do you have to contribute to this wonderful stream so far, Medocur, since you decided to join us? I, I've just been enjoying listening to everybody yell at each other. That's been fantastic. Who doesn't like that? A nice heated debate uh, going on is always entertaining. <laughs> All right, perfect. Uh, Stephen, did you want to continue? Yeah, so I guess like in terms of American values or American society, I, I thought that, or at least for my goal personally, for my personal philosophies, you always want to enable people to make the, the most choices that they can to maximize their own personal happiness. So things like access to contraceptives or things like uh, giving women the right to choose for an abortion, these are positive things. Um, if you want to argue against it, I mean, you can, but that seems to be like earlier, I think you made fun of Nick because you said that he was authoritarian and you were libertarian, but now you're talking about how the state needs to cut off access to things like right. abortion because we're enabling women to make bad choices or something. Well, I think abortion is its own thing because I think, you know, someone's freedom to abortion is not trumped by the right of a fetus to, you know, not die. Um, but when we're, we're talking about things like the welfare state, which I also mentioned, the welfare state is basically the antithesis of small government. Yeah, I don't disagree with that, but and that, we're talking about the welfare state. We're talking about like the promiscuity much. of women. It's like that well, was an issue both. that needed it's, to be addressed by government. And, well, it's both. So the welfare state and abortion, those things in tandem have, I think, very much destroyed the, the prevalence of the nuclear family, especially when we're talking about low income communities. And if we're, we're looking at that now, like, you know, 40 years ago or 50 years ago, the African-American instance of, you know, marriage what was was comparable to white families. If we look at that now, it's it, it's totally been destroyed. And we, we can't ignore the policy implications that have come from things like, you know, enlarging the, uh, what you call it, the, the welfare state. And, you know, when we're talking about, I've, by the way, never said we should limit um, access to contraception. That's something you threw in there. Just want to mention that's something I've never said. But we, we can't ignore that when we subsidize something, we make it, we make it easier to do. And that's very much the fact with, with single mothers right now. Okay, more guys. Kids, yeah. welfare I mean, checks. I mean, okay. This this is getting a little. This is stagnating in one spot. We're just screaming at each other about single motherhood. Not that it's not uh, a fascinating topic and a massive problem in the West right now. But I do want to see if anyone wants to move on to any other topics so that we can keep this entertaining, keep this fun, and move on to other people. Nick, there in Medicare, anything you want to talk about? Uh, no not bullshit. Not in particular. No, I'm good. Uh, uh, I mean, if we're opening it up to just different topics of conversation. Uh, Destiny, what brand of stilts do you use? Because I've been... That was a nice one, dude. Curious I love about it when that people that literally use a cartoon <laughs> avatar build their entire personality around a top no, no, of no, get, That's actually really funny. Get off me, your dude. high horse. That's right, really good. Go you got, you got any sure. more there in your little book there? I know how long you've Little book. Are you like, sure that's not You're real, real excited. I borrowed it from you. little book. What cartoon picture did you use to represent yourself for this conversation, buddy? Uh, three homosexual men. You, you should, the, uh, you should appreciate it. That's pretty funny, dude. <laughs> you, you should appreciate it. Three <laughs> games. You're a riot, my man. I know. I know you love it. I know you love it. That's why I'm here well, to, this, bring, to bring the banter, Destiny. This has just spiraled into productivity, guys. <laughs> um, well, people in the chat, and I don't, I've talked a lot, so I don't need to start on this, but people are in the chat are asking about um, the whole it's okay to be white thing. So I don't know if, like, Theron, Destiny, any of you guys have any, like, maybe we could talk about that. Sure. Perfect. Uh, all right. I don't know. Is anybody is, is anybody in this call selling fucking T-shirts about this? Because that's kind of it's kind of gay. I got to be honest. Because I've I've heard some people are trying to trying to make some money off of that. And it's a it's a little bit dumb in my opinion. Right. I, I'm actually going to be hoping to go out and put some of the posters out soon. I think it's a perfect perfectly uh, reasonable thing to put out and to support. It's simple. Pisses people off for all the right reasons. T-shirts a little silly. Uh, manufacturing at mass but steven do you find it's okay to be white particularly offensive um i mean it's pretty obvious what the goal is i guess if your goal is to just piss people off i mean it's, it kind of reminds me of the all lives matter movement well no it's to expose a clear hypocrisy well I no mean, it doesn't really expose any you you had a campus come out and say this message does not represent our university a message that says it's okay to be white you really just read it you just really you read the line lauren and that's it you just take it at face value like that <laughs> what? What are you what? talking about, Destiny? 
It's think, obvious what's going on in the country with an okay. anti-white bias, a clear. Oh God, it's so hard like, to be a white man today. Hey, in America. Steve, oh God. Steve, well, actually, it's easy because being oh. white, we are we are pretty strong. We've been through a lot, so it's not difficult. Oh. But there is an anti-white bias. Look, affirmative action policies. Oh man, affirmative well. action! Holy shit, my That's you know all crazy. that generational wealth handed down by whites over and over again, and I didn't oh, receive no, any some generational kids, some wealth. Schools, hey, Destiny, some I didn't schools, receive any kids. generational oh, wealth. Man. I didn't oh, I'm glad that your personal story is representative of the average white man in the United States. Once again, no, this way is such a cunning is, understanding of statistics and data. Keep it up. The point is the only institutional discrimination in the country today is against white people. And you, I'm sure maybe you're some kind of Black Lives Matter cuck, but many people have it in their minds that that black people are discriminated against, that there's this institutional racism against non-whites. But in fact, the only institutional on the books policies that discriminate in practice in, in written code against white people are those affirmative action policies. And you ask if those hurt people, you ask if that makes a difference, of course it does. You know, that you tell somebody who's white, they don't get to go to college because of the color of their skin. They don't get a job because of the color of their skin. In places where that was challenged, like at the University of Texas, they still took the top 10% of applicants and the Supreme Court struck that down as not necessarily oh, being a racist oh, dude, policy. Dude, you're using your personal oh, story man. to disprove My data. personal story? I'm not a Utah student. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not using one Supreme Court. Example. And if you want to talk about actual discrimination, well, destiny, you to more destiny. Supreme Court, like the voter ID law, in North Carolina. We all, know, we all know there's an answer. Voter, voter ID laws do not discriminate by like by their written law against any race. Affirmative but they do. Please stop. Oh, God. Affirmative action policies are explicitly <sighs> racist and not just against whites, but also against Asians. So I mean, like, they, right they're totally to the Supreme different. Court, dude, I don't want to argue their case against you. I mean, like in North Carolina, it was very, very clearly targeted towards black people. The state legislature requested data by racial breakdown in order to disallow the very specific dates that black people voted and the very specific types of ID that black people use to vote and to close very specific black majority voting booths, right? I know that for people like you, for the enlightened centrist, if it's not there in the letter of the law, you don't think that it's racist. But for the rest of us that have to deal with the pragmatic implementation of policy in the real world, these things end up being pretty fucking racist. Destiny, oh, this little guy, guy, you must hate all right, all right, wait, wait, wait. You're, always making excuses. You're always making excuses. I like to say, let's hold everybody to the same standard. Let's have the same expectations of everybody. I think the people, not to go Dems are the real races, but you know what, Destiny? You don't care about black people. In fact, I think you think less of black people because you read into their, their experience all these excuses. Oh, well, it was voter ID laws. Oh, well, it's explicitly anti-black. No, no, no. The truth of the matter is how much money has been dedicated to these programs for inner cities, for black youth, for blacks in STEM, for blacks in college, diversity quotas, and, and nothing's changed. So it's time to say, you know what? We are in the post-racial America. I grew up in a country where there was no institutional discrimination. It's time to say, look, everybody's got to play ball. Everybody's got to play by the same rules. How do you explain studies where they take where they take similar applications and they switch out a white name with a black name and the guy has a 50% chance less of getting a call back? How do you explain something like I, that? Oh, I, I can explain that easily because okay. blacks and whites, there are differences in the representation and the statistics. For example, if you look at the crime statistics for 2016, you look at just about any, no, I think it's all measures of crime and black people commit by far and away more crime than white people. And by the way, the proportions are, are virtually the same, whether it's rape, murder, uh, you know, whatever you want to divided by. And so, so then people are using that, economy why, of information. Why did you pivot? Why did I pivot? Why is it I fair that if a black guy has the exact same application as a white person and his name is switched with a white person, he'll have twice the chance what, of getting and, hired. And by the way, where does this happen? Where does this happen? If what? It's one of the most happens. popular studies on institutional racism sure, in the United let's States. See this. What study? What study? <sighs> Hold on. Yeah, <laughs> actually, study? Actually, wanna, actually, wanna, actually, wanna no, it doesn't exist, Bob. It doesn't actually, happen. Actually, country. regarding that study, I have heard of it as well. But I no, think everyone has heard of it. It's like it's one of the most awesome. Destiny, I'm throwing you a bone. Just hold on a sec, okay? Right. But I think what's interesting regarding that study, if you look at what are the traditionally black names that they've chosen, they're actually, I mean, they're things like, you know, Shaniqua, things like that. Black people can have names like Darren, like Wilson, things like that. So How the do black you think person has the wrong name? It's okay no, to discriminate on. against hang them? On. I'm, I'm making a point, Destiny. Seems how fair. do you think a white person with a name like I don't know Billy Bob Thornton would do? Like, how do you think a, someone, a white person with a name like I don't know Mary Sue or like I don't know hillbilly redneck names? I think you know I'm not saying that racism doesn't exist within individual hiring practices, but I also think there's an element of classism here that perhaps people are ignoring. 
right? And it's, it's, it's not just like, oh, black versus white. It's also, I mean, it's also a class thing. You can tell a lot with a name. How can you take They're, white names, replace them with black names and somehow extrapolate from what, that? It must but be what, class. What is, what is a white name versus a black name? Give me a black name, Destiny. Like Tyrone or Jamal? Is Steven not a black a name? Destiny? Not generally. Are we going to sit here and right. love the dishonesty? We're going to sit here and pretend that white people, people don't have certain mean. names generally and black people don't tend to have certain... How many white women do you know that are named Shaniqua? Wow, or Steven, I believe in equality, okay? There's no differences between Yeah, but you people. also believe that somebody that goes to Washington High School is going to have no. the same opportunities in life as somebody Steven. that goes to, like, St. Louis to the Pope in the 23rd. I'm hearing a lot of problematic uh, rhetoric coming out of you. Oh, that I love the meme, right? Who, when name? we go into a corner that we can't Steven. respond to, better pull out our memes, boys. It's problematic. <laughs> Does you're, anyone else here like Lake Hekistan? <laughs> I don't believe there is any such thing <laughs> as a black like, name. You see the frog? Right, I, I want to <laughs> jump in here for two seconds. Anyone else, else here is a black name? Steven, else I, else thought black. Black. I thought you were black. I thought you were black. Come on, come come on guys. We, we all know, know that black guys aren't called Steven. Like, I mean, Destiny's <laughs> right. No black people have the name Steven? I remember when Destiny said that. All right. I, uh, sorry, I've let this go to shit. I hope you're enjoying this on your Sunday evening I'm anyways, funny. guys. I, I do, <laughs> I do want to mention though, I, I have a question about the name thing because this does happen in a lot of cases. What about in higher learning? You had that gentleman, and this is a story that many of us know about, easily Googleable, where he kept repeatedly entering his poetry to be accepted, to be published, to be published, to published, and he could not get it published until he changed his name to an Asian name because then he was suddenly within a criteria of like diversity hiring. So within the arts, within other fields, you certainly see this as well. And this is just a natural thing that exists in the world. It is certainly being pushed uh, by leftist agendas who want to get rid of whites. And right now our culture is currently pushing against any sort of agenda to hire uh, against or being prejudiced towards minorities. That is not a popular trend in the culture at all. It's pushing the opposite way to be prejudiced towards whites, even if that is still happening to an extent. So, once again, your evidence for this is a single data point. Why? You no, just man, no. cited it's one just... single study. I cited about... one of the most comprehensive studies from the National Bureau of Economics Research called Are Emily and Greg More Employable Than Lakeisha and Jamal? The study is kind of old, but it has been one of the most comprehensive studies. They did thousands of applications on this to kind see whether old. or not a... What? Okay, well then, How Stephen, let me cite the law. There's diversity hiring oh. in Canada for all government jobs. If I'm a woman or someone who is black or Asian or whatever, I am more likely to get a job in the military or police force or in education. That is the freaking law. So beyond just social prejudices, we have it as a legal prejudice against whites. Mm, true. And no, also nothing. in the, in the <laughs> yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, that's, <laughs> if you got an answer to that. Well, I, well, I don't, I mean, the, the, the goal behind affirmative action policies is that usually they try to open up positions or they try to find ways to help groups that have been disproportionately impact by, impacted by past law and generally white people don't seem to be hurt by this very much. That's why we're not having a discussion right now about how all of the white communities are being destroyed and all of white is uh, the whitehood or whatever white people are being thrown into poverty as a result of these horrible, atrocious affirmative action programs. Like you, you can, you can cite me all the one-off things you want or like, well, the law says this thing, but you can't find me these communities of white people that are being destroyed by criminal justice systems or are being destroyed by you know failing <laughs> education systems or fucked up cities like you just can't find it i love how you say that it's the criminal justice system like black people commit crime black people go to jail it's the criminal justice system no maybe if there was maybe there's a culture of responsibility and, uh, I mean, like, if you look at reported rates for marijuana use, there are plenty of age groups. I think in every age group, except for like two or three, like five year chunks, white people report higher use of marijuana than black people do. But black people are like twice as likely to be locked yeah, up. Yeah, for that's it. because there's more violent crime. That's because there's more violent crime in black neighborhoods. You, okay, you want so to know the why way they get you... locked up for because the police have to be there. I don't know if you've ever been to Chicago, Stephen, but there's a lot of marijuana usage where I am in the suburbs. Not a lot of gang killings, not a lot of rape. You go a little bit east, and there's a lot of that stuff. It makes sense why the police goes over there. These, you know, you can all day long. You want to pretend that at once there's no differences between people. We're all equal. They, oh, you know, they're so poor. They, you know, whatever. Blah blah blah. But at the same time, 
there's black names. At the same time, you know, you can't have it I, always. No, I don't want to have it always. I never, you always try to present this as the most hyperbolic thing possible. It, believe it or not, it is simultaneously possible to recognize that there are problems in the black community, some of them maybe even belonging to black people and black cultures themselves, while also recognizing that black people have disproportionately faced really fucked up things in their history in America that other white people haven't. You can simultaneously recognize both of these positions and be just fine. What, what are some, Steve? And I'm just curious, yeah. what would you say what? are some black cultural uh, problems? Name some for me. <laughs> yeah, can see. Well, I mean, black people's are. relationship to the police is 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 pretty fucking dire at the moment. I would say, right? Maybe well, they should stop doing I mean, crimes. In what uh, in what no, context? Coming dude. from the He's police to black crimes, people, dude. or from black people to the police? What? I, I said, in what context? You know, we were talking like black cultural problems. I just want to hear you name a few. Do you mean their relationship with the police is in? The police are treating them badly or black people are responding badly to the police i would say it's probably a combination of both okay. but a lot of this roots out of uh, roots from the problems of, of police legitimately fucking up black people and earlier in the 50s and 60s and shit right a lot of it a lot of culture is reactionary to other problems that's just goofy man nobody who is born nobody's 20 years old today knows police brutality from the 1950s you can't know but they're literal this, parents oh, historical parents, racism yeah. that doesn't excuse and by the way, it's, it's not like it's just it's just like communities here that haven't been working. Certain people have been failing for thousands of years. And to write that off is like, oh, well, it's just because they haven't been given enough money or programs, I think is, is a little bit ridiculous. You know, it's it's kind of coincidental. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That but paying Detroit, them all a thousand dollars to ship them back to Africa. That's a that's a very I mean, realistic. I problem. don't know right who's there. talking about that. Okay. Who's who talking about that? shipping them back to Africa? Right. Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, no, Steve. Steve. Steve, who raised that point? I didn't hear that once during this stream. Yeah, right. <laughs> isn't that isn't that part of the big uh, meme for you building your white ethno state? Is you have to no, ship some people no, back wacky to Steve. Steve. Wait, so wacky how do you how do you deal with it right now? How do you deal with all the Hispanic, all those evil? What are you talking? What are you talking about dealing with the? What are you talking about? Steve. You want a white super? I'm sorry. I thought you mentioned a white supermajority of the United States earlier. Did you know? Yeah, yeah. By uh, exactly by raising birth rates, by having families again. By so, how do you keep Hispanic rate? and black people from having kids and and make white Whoa, people have more kids? Nobody's talking about I'm that. Nobody's how you do talking it. No, about I want you to this, talk Steven. about it. How do you do it? How do you? We're not it? we're not trying to stop people from having babies. We want the majority in the country to start having kids again, and it's it's because their birth rate is so low that their population hasn't been maintained. Do you think? By by the way, Stephen, do you think it's been like an accident that the population of whites in the country went from 90 percent to 67 percent in 50 years you think that was an accident it was and for uh, us for it us to was, want yeah, to sure. move in the opposite direction we're villains for that you are the ones that want to that push this artificial this artificial transformation unnatural transformation of our country it's and very we have natural. to justify ending what? that it's insanely natural. It's just immigration. So You're the ones that's talking about there arbitrarily restricting natural. certain people to coming to the country. You're the definition of it's arbitrary. Hardly, it's hardly arbitrary to say the people from broken non-states, from failed states, shouldn't come into our country. Hey, Syria, you can't come in here. You call that arbitrary when 20% when of their people support ISIS? I don't think so. I mean, Syria is a refugee case. Do you want to talk about refugees or immigrants, or do you just mix well, all these groups well, together? Okay, you know, let's take, let's take Mexico, for example, where south of certain districts, it's law you have no government. The cartels run the country. So yeah, I mean, you could take Mexico, El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Africa, the Middle East. Pick one. Pick one. Pick one. What legislation or policies are Mexicans pushing in the United States that are causing it to turn into Mexico? Uh, All right, just, just give one, one and the 1965 immigration Democrat. act. What is Easy. 1965? No, I want to know what policies Mexicans yeah, sure, sure. The, the, the provisions that are turning us into Mexico. The it's not Mexicans doing it. It's a it's a certain group of rootless transnational elites. The Hart Seller Act, which pushed certain provisions, it eliminated the national origins quota. It said that it allowed chain migration so that people that are families of immigrants can come here. That was deliberate. And and again. You you put the burden of proof on us to end your program to transform our country. Wait, this wasn't your program. This was this wasn't our program. This All right, wasn't our guys, program. the white men have taken over the chat. This is absolutely disgusting. It is bigoted. I've had enough of white men running this stream. So uh, we are going to bring in some minority voices for about two seconds here. Theron, did you want to jump in and comment on any of the autistic screeching you've heard for the last <laughs> thirty minutes? <laughs> Well, every time I, I have a moment to jump in to comment on a topic, we've already moved on to another another topic. I still have some thoughts on um, the it's okay to be white thing. So that oh, was a while ago. <laughs> I know. That's long past. I know. Missed that train. <laughs> you guys are so heated, and I and I I guess I'm not assertive enough to just jump in and say everyone shut up. But 
um, I is it worth going back on that? Otherwise, we can just carry on, and I'll just comment on something if I have a thought on any new topic. No, 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 no. Okay, please bring up a new point. Bring up something new. Yeah. Oh, something completely new. Whatever you want. Uh, everyone, okay, okay. this, this well, is a diverse stream. Everyone is allowed to bring in new opinions. Everyone's allowed to talk. No, I just, I wanted to comment on the it's okay to be white thing because it dovetails into a larger point that I have. So that was put up on university campuses, right? Yes, uh, well, all over the place. Okay, well, the thing is that we all know that uh, anti-white sentiments are prevailing on campus. I mean, that is just obvious. Uh, so I think that makes a lot of sense to put uh, stuff like that, like it's okay to be white signs up on university campuses. And I think the thing with the mainstream media and, and leftists is that they just immediately interpret as the worst possible interpretation of oh, this is Nazi propaganda. And that doesn't mean that there couldn't be subtext uh, ever. Certainly there could be some subtext, subtext, but I still think it's still important to employ the principle of charity and to interpret uh, statements, the, to use the best plausible interpretation of a statement or argument when conversing with someone else. And that's a problem on both sides. I think there's a problem with the right and a problem with the left when dealing with each other is that they that they don't employ the principle of charity towards one right. another. So yeah. like Nick and Steven, everything is translated in the worst possible yes. uh, translation of the way. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So spaghetti. I, that's my second language. I'm just so for, ex so for example, when... when <laughs> when Steven said black names, obviously he didn't mean names that are inherently black. Obviously he <laughs> meant names that are names that are predominantly associated or are mostly assigned to people who are black. That is the most, that is the most reasonable, the, the best, strongest plausible interpretation. Uh, so that's not fair, right? That is not charitable. Um, and then I'm sure Steve said a bunch of things towards Nick that was not uh, really very charitable towards Nick, though I right. can't think of one right now. Well, this, is, this is the nature of debate these days. It's funny, it's entertaining, and it is helpful to debate. And when the opponent in a debate is not charitable with you, why be charitable with them is what it ultimately comes down to. Uh, it's not necessarily the most <laughs> radical, centrist, most reasonable way of approaching things, but it is the world we live in and it is the state of debate that we are in now. It's gotten to extremes where, of course, you have, for example, the Antifa holding up that we support pedos, no pedo bashing thing, where they literally dropped that immediately after, according to some articles, and interpreting that the wrong way uh, has really destroyed any sort of argument or actually attacking their actual points. But, I mean, with the current way that the left is treating the right, it is just as devolved. How do we fix this, guys? Let's let's end this stream on a nice point. Where Where is some common ground that you lads can find? Uh, mm. Let's go to Steven and Nick, since you guys have been at each other's throats. Any well, common ground you I can mean, find? I mean, people like Steven need to be thrown in jail, okay? These these subversives. Well, no. Nah, before we get started, I'm not even Jewish, dude. Why would you say that? Fuck. The problem, why why are you reading into it? You hear like <laughs> people ruling the country, and then you think Jew. Are you anti-Semitic? Transnational. I know, dude. I watched all the Mount Buddha videos. People? I know who Listen. those transnationalist elites are. I got well, my eyes on them. Well, dude. you are an anti-Semite, okay? But here's where we can find. Some I'm just a realist, ground. dude. Here's where we can find some common ground. People like Stephen have to be held responsible for the fact that. They are pushing policies that are transformative, and the natural order continues to be perverted. And I think if we could argue from that axiom where Stephen has to justify millions of people coming here, instead of me having to justify why we don't take millions of people, I think that's a, a productive way to change the conversation because it happens to be the reality of the situation. Can I just jump in? Sure. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I need to take issue... Yeah. I need to take issue with uh, Nick's uh, constant use of the term natural order because mm. I think it's a complete misnomer. I think it's maybe in your mind religious order or traditional order mm. or cultural order. It's not natural order. I don't think you understand nature and biodiversity if you want to equate natural order with whatever you're talking about because uh, nature is actually uh, allows for a lot of variation and of course, there are, of, of course there are trends of course there are trends of course women are uh, 
on average predisposed to want to have children, but that doesn't mean that nature doesn't allow for some women who are predisposed to probably hate to have children and would probably be better off not having children. This whole idea that there is this, uh, this order ordained by nature, in your case, God, uh, onto humans is just fallacious. The, the, the reality of the situation is that nature is constantly in flux, that the environment is constantly in flux, and that we're constantly adapting. So the natural order is constantly changing. It's just religious order. Please stop equating your understanding of what humans should be with nature. Well, you're one to lecture on naturalism, but the, the natural order of things, <laughs> we all understand what that means. And, and up until very recently, we all understood what that means. Until what, very is, what, is, what are you talking about? You're someone to talk. Yeah, because well, because you are living an alternative lifestyle. You are living a lifestyle. You are making choices that are unnatural. And no, uh, that's not me saying that. That's not, that is, that can is you, God please, saying please, that. Please, uh, no, 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 no. No, please. Absolutely. That's complete bullshit. Okay, the, uh, the idea uh, that, that, that nature doesn't allow for variation. Where do you see, where do you oh, see well, gender you reassignment saying? surgeries in the animal kingdom? Where do you see that's, like little can, can kangaroos we not, can we not operating this, on each other? Can we not make this about me? Well, yeah, like, I mean, you, because you, you're you someone to talk about this. Hey, no, you brought that's, yourself. No, that's an ad hominem. You that's an yourself, oh, okay. well, I was talking about that, your ideas. I was talking about your ideas, and then you made it about well, my gender. Well, we know, we know why you take issue with this natural order. No, we know I'm, why not, this... I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not talking about the whole trans thing. I'm talking about. I'm relating this to like women wanting to or not wanting to have kids. Well, and I wasn't then, even in that about case, well, but the, the that's exception. just like that's just like that. That is just perfect example of an ad hominem. Fair enough. Fair enough. But then with regard to women, the the exception proves the rule. Of course you can have women that are working. Of course you have anomalies. Catherine the Great, Joan of Arc, Elizabeth, Victoria. We can have exceptions, but the exceptions prove the rule. I mean, that's the whole point. I mean, you wouldn't say, for example, that because you have uh, an apple. Yes, well, that that's why I'm saying. Example, but, by some freak example, an apple is blue. You wouldn't say that apples come in red, that's green, why I'm and blue. That natural order allows for variation. You just proved my point. You no, but, have you no, have an no, idea no. in your mind of mm. religious order. You have an no, idea in your mind of cultural order. Well, I order. mean, I, I don't see eye to eye with Nick on everything, but I don't think it's necessarily him inserting religion into this to say that the natural order is for people to be fit, forming pair bonds and having children. Even no, if we accept that people if people, some people, individuals may not want to do that, it is undisputably the natural order for people to make no, children and raise you, them. You guys are talking about two different things. You're talking yeah. about the natural order as exists as a scientific fact. Nick is asserting that it is a philosophical ought. These are two gaps that well, most I mean, people it's, it's generally... Well, I mean, it's both. No, 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 it's, it's, not, it's, it's, not, yeah, both. it's both. not both. It's not both. Unless you're Sam Harris, it's not both. Um, you, you cannot bridge the fact that some things exist in the world si of, of science and they all of a sudden become biological imperatives. We spend plenty of time in our daily lives. We are talking to each other on video screens using and computers to, to, to communicate with one another, okay? We do a lot of things that can't be directly tied to our biological imperatives. Um, that is that's ridiculous. Right, but that doesn't, but that doesn't well, make I mean, it. Do you hunt for your food, Nick? Have you gone out hunting recently? Uh, of course it's different exactly. to say that we use don't. technology. So you do not no, no, believe no, no. in your... No, no, no. <laughs> but in principle, well, and we can talk about Ted Kaczynski and if we should even be doing all of this, but besides the point, we're using tools. We're using tools, but the fundamental reality, the principle you that use tools human to kill your food? Change, well, this is a tool. Uh, the, the market process, the civilization can be considered a, a sociological tool, of course. I mean, that's a, a fallacious argument that I don't think anybody thinks is relevant to the conversation. You know, to, to equate anarcho-primitivism to using your biological limitations to govern your decision-making, you don't think anybody equates those two except no, for you. No, here's the, well, the argument. Nobody, the nobody in society that talks about morals. All right, all right, all right you, two, you two are going to take over the stream again, so I'm going to give Theron a chance to respond and then Roaming a chance to respond. Here's the difference. Someone who is naturally, so a woman who is naturally predisposed uh, not to, to want to have children and probably not be a good mother and probably someone who shouldn't have children. She's not someone who goes against the natural order. She is someone who is part of a natural order as a variation on that order. There's a difference between, between being an exception to the rule and uh, going against the rule and this idea of intentional intentionality and that's where natural order that's where this religious thinking comes in and where the moralistic uh, uh argumentation okay. comes in that is exactly what nick is talking about he's I using the problem he's using, nature, he's using nature to uh explain his 
uh, religiosity. And I don't agree with that. Even if I consider myself a, a, a traditionalist uh, in many ways, in very, many ways, and I think that co our, our society should be a lot more traditional in many ways, I'm not going to use natural order to uh, to explain my point of view because well, no it's one just... Does. Okay, it's here we go. Here we go. I, I think I can identify the problem. And the problem here seems to be semantics. It seems to be that, of course, Theron, you are right. Variations are part of the natural order, it, technically speaking. However, when we're speaking on just a general term of naturally, this is typically what happens. Generally speaking, I understand what Nick's point is. And generally speaking, I understand what Roaming Millennials' point is. But technically speaking, you are correct. It's but this that's is not an just argument the over semantics. That's this is an argument over semantics, though. It's, this is no, not, it's not just, argument, it's not just the technicality, because there's a there's a very very uh, very important difference in meaning when you say someone is an exception to the natural order and someone is going against the natural order or the ordained word of God. There's a difference well, between just know. existing as as you know a, a woman who just is naturally predisposed not to want to have children and a woman who is, you know, sinning against the word of God because she doesn't want to have children. Well, I mean, I don't think Nick has said that in this stream that people are sinning against the word of God if they don't. Well, I, I, I'm, Nick I'm, I'm talking about intentionality here. I'm talking about intention. Right, but I think when, when we think about... You can't, as descri you can't ascribe intention onto nature. You can't describe your yeah, you morality can. onto nature. Oh, you well, can. This, this, this well, isn't well, necessarily a moral... Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Natural selection does not have can. intention. Of Natural selection can. does not have intention. Well, the There's intention, no intention. Well, we're talking about reproduction, that, and the intention of reproduction is to have children. But so that's I, not how we use it in a society today. Everybody uses contraception. Even yeah, you know, but, is, but, but we are talking disaster. specifically about oh. we are talking specifically about families, or at least that's what my impression was when we're talking about women having families and having children. Maybe I've lost sight of the conversation, though. Totally possible. Yeah, I, I think I might be a little lost. So the, this, what Theron is, the, the difference between what these two are <laughs> arguing, I think, okay, if I can try to understand Nick's point of view, is Nick says that there is a certain order to the natural world, that this order is something that can be factually and scientifically observed, and that we should do our best to preserve that order in society. That's essentially Nick's argument, right? Is that a fair summary of your it point? Is, it is natural, societal, and cosmic, the order I'm talking about. So, you know, you say that it's philosophical and it's also biological. It's all part of a coherent system. But that's just bullshit, so, because well, so the natural order can change. Argument. In the, a thousand the, years, in a thousand yeah. years, no. uh, of course, the, like the problem. The problem is that Nick the environment is, is constantly changing, and we are constantly adapting to a constantly changing environment. So, in a million years' time, what is the natural order then? Is or the cosmic order then is completely different from what it is now. This idea that it's this uh, platonic ideal and eternally stable thing is completely religious. Of course, it's eternal. Of course, and it's been true. No, it's the not. Time. It's course, not so completely look, eternal. Are you gonna let me? Are you gonna let me finish, babe? Okay, look, of course it's eternal. Men and women are not, are not in flux biologically. Like, in a, maybe in a, a million years, and we'll have to ask our, our future selves in a million years if the biology has changed. But as it stands, men and women still have different brain chemistry. As it stands, men and women still have different biology. And, and biology... Of course they that, do, and I agree with you. I agree with you. believes in comparative advantage only insofar as it extends to the marketplace. He doesn't believe in comparative advantage when it comes to the fact that women are more suited to rearing and raising children, and men more I suited totally to hunting, that. building things. I to totally believe that. Soldiers. I, I think if that. we... I think that if we had a 100% equal society where there was no pressure on any sides whatsoever, I think that you would see women gravitate towards some jobs more than men. I totally 100% believe. No, they would gravitate towards the home. That would be the job they gravitate. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, because in your world, no women ever wants to work any job ever. Okay, but no, that's even, not. No, in, no, no, in the marketplace, the in world. the marketplace, if women could still work in the world where they're allowed to choose jobs, that women would probably gravitate towards some things more than others. The problem is that what Nick is trying to do is Nick is taking his observation of the natural order and. He's He's trying to extrapolate a system of morals from that. But in society, we generally don't do this. If we have a person who is um, who, who is like, say we have somebody that's disabled, right? Somebody in a wheelchair. We don't typically say, well, naturally speaking, this is a person that needs to die. We shouldn't be providing uh, medical resources for them. We shouldn't be providing food for them because naturally speaking, somebody that- We also provide... wouldn't be saying that that person is going against the natural exactly. order, right? Right, but I mean, to address that, we also, to be fair, wouldn't say that that person 
is completely normal. It's very clear that they have a disability. And if I can bring this back to, you know, the whole debate about like, you know, women and having children, it is totally fine if an individual woman doesn't want to have children and wants to focus on a career or whatever. She just doesn't want children for whatever reason. I guess that, I, that doesn't I, mean I, that. Sorry, can you ahead, acknowledge sorry. the difference? Oh, sorry, I guess my point is that I feel like, uh, the part like variation and the acknowledgement of human variation is slowly getting lost in this natural order conversation because mm -hmm. you have to you have to acknowledge that variation natural variation and biodiversity is part of the conversation the di what, 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 human biodiversity of course but you know you talk about men and women and and you talk about aristotle's four causes let's talk about aristotle's four causes the last of aristotle's four causes is the final cause which means that all things that are created all things that exist have a final end they are directed towards a particular end and human beings are directed towards a particular end you know why do we have why do we have reproductive appendages? Hint, it's in the name. It's not for recreation. It's not so you could do degenerate, you know, cosmopolitan magazine sex positions. It's so that you can continue the species. It's so that you can, after you get married, have lots of children and then they, they take care of you. And they Marriage? Take care of do you think monogamy is part of the natural, natural order? order? Monogamy is part of the natural order? Of course it is. Why Maybe not in certain, why am I certain barbarous. Why other women then after they're married? That's well. That has nothing to do with it. They, a society. What do you mean? Construct. That's a perfectly natural biological function. Well, here, I mean, if if it was biological, women would have multiple orifices for multiple partners, but that's just not a part but of they, it. I mean, but, why would it be? Uh, some, why, some, some, why would every evolution. society? Wait, no, no, no. Hold on. I'm curious because yeah, go biologically it. speaking, a man and a woman can be married, and that man can still feel intense sexual attraction for for other people. So why would that be unnatural to you? Shouldn't men naturally be polyamorous? No, no, because again, it's it's a difference between men having certain sexual chemistry, and the reason for that is because there are, you know, women are the selectors in terms of who carries on the genes. Women have You're to choose who my carries question. on. I don't, I don't think Nick is making an entirely point. natural argument. I Excuse think me. absolutely why. Um, in the process <laughs> of not, making my argument, he's making it no. now. But, he's no, telling he's, you he's no, making but, it now. Look, but the thing, ladies, the thing, men, everyone. Let's, uh, I need to wrap this stream up soon, as fun as this has been. Uh, I, <laughs> I found this absolutely entertaining for my Sunday night, but I will take some final statements, some final points from everyone. I apologize for cutting you off right there. I think there were about somehow 20 people talking at once, despite there only being <laughs> six people in here. So uh, does anyone want to make any final statements, final points <laughs> to, the, to wrap up this hilarity? Uh, yeah, I, I'd love to, if I can have a minute. Excellent. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted We're a little to short on time, so keep it fast. Uh, I, I, I will. I, I just wanted to ask the little guy: Are you still suing girls on the internet? Ooh, I actually am not uh, able to talk about that publicly at the moment. I'm sorry. But you're suing. Hear... You're suing somebody I, for hurt I can't feelings. Speak really? About that. Your advice of counsel. I'm not supposed to talk about that right now. I'm sorry. You can't. You can't legally speak about I you suing. Not, I shouldn't. I really shouldn't. Feelings. I really shouldn't. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, that is sad. That is fucking sad. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you too that uh, you know that I've got a short minute here. Um, <laughs> are you ever going to pay that charity money you owe, or are you going to just be a snake oil? Well, somebody said that I that? somebody said that I call people racial slurs in StarCraft too, and that uh, that's, that that's image not, was that's not what I'm talking too. about. Not that what I'm image, talking about. Wait, what other thing was talked about? Uh, you wanted somebody to quote you, and you said, "If you can find me saying this, I'll pay a thousand dollars to you." Yeah, I think it was guy, calling somebody like the, the, the guy. Found, or uh, the guy found the quote, the, not the StarCraft thing. The oh, guy well, you the can quote me the tweet later and tell me what it was about because I don't remember this. Okay, because he he found the quote and he gave it to you. And he asked you to donate that money to a British charity for midgets. Oh, so shit. you owe that fucking money to them. Well, You've been you watching better... it for three months. Three I guess months. I, I guess I just have a short attention span. <laughs> I, I guess you do, man. You, uh, yeah, you better go ahead and shoot me that tweet again, and I'll look into you it. Need buddy, to, okay? You need to pay what you owe. Yeah, you're right. I actually, I think mean, I if you I have remember money it. to hire lawyers and sue girls on the internet, you should have the money to pay. Oh, your I debt. never said I was doing any of that. Oof. You said was under advice of counsel, you can't talk about it. No, this wasn't the end. I can't really say. Uh, I can't I'm really not talking about, about it. I'm really sorry. I wish I could I, speak to you more about I'm this. Not, I'm not talking about the thing where he went off on some black chick and called her an Uncle Tom. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah Patty. that was funny stuff. Yeah, good That's old good Patty. Destiny. Yeah. Was that <laughs> the right, same that one that you tweeted out the uh, KKK crucifix burning picture to? No, that was actually to a black nationalist. But yeah, that was a pretty good tweet too. I like that one. That's good stuff. I I liked it. You're the gamer gay guy, right? I thought you said we shouldn't be offended by this kind of stuff. Or does it just bother you when I say it because we disagree? Oh, uh, no, I thing. fucking love it. I, I wish you did more stuff like that. Oh, well, there you go. I try to, dude. Keep, keep an eye on my chat. I'm a pretty edgy dude. I, w I want you to be more edgy. Okay. We I can both wear Kekistani shirts. 
Go oh, Shadowlay. No. Oh, gross. I'm a little too old for that. Uh, you you want to do that? We go like, Shadowlay? Like, no, I don't know if I really want to associate with the Kekistani dudes, but, you know, may, Wait, my kid is actually um, he's almost seven here. years old. Maybe in, like, a couple years he'll be old enough for the Kekistani stuff. I'll, I'll get oh, him a shirt. Right? Have you had the big conversation with him yet about whether it's morally right to fuck him? It's pretty hard for me to have big <laughs> conversations about anything, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy well you know to, to wrap it up i mean look we can argue back and forth about the data you know we can look at the data all we want you know it i know it we all know it the natural order must prevail and i will bludgeon women back into the home rhetorically speaking with the holy bible if i have to and i will rhetorically and uh so i'll leave it at that i am a crusader for women and blacks and jewish people i want them to succeed and be happy and that's my fight i'm, I'm a, a social justice warrior wow okay <laughs> thank you very much for that uh anyone else like to well, wrap this up with some kind comments i i just kind of like what i i was trying to uh say to theron is that i whenever i talk about you know marriage and family and things like that um very often people get the sense that you're condemning the morality of people who choose to go against you but what i would like to see is a culture where you know in for university for example i think we all kind of generally agree that university is a good choice to make but that doesn't mean someone who chooses not to go to university is a bad or immoral person that's what i would like to see regarding marriage and the family that we all recognize it as a universal good but that we don't demonize people if their personal circumstances don't point toward that way. And I, I think there is something to be said about, you know, judge not lest you be judged, just saying, Nick. No, I will. I will judge them. <laughs> I will judge them until Christ himself sits at the right hand of the Father and judges them. No, I'm, oh, I'm joking. But, hold your breath but, for but that it's true. But it's, um, but it's true. I mean, it, it's, it's a moral good, too. And, uh, you know, I, I don't judge people if they're in a personal circumstance where they can't. Um, where they have to work. But I just think societally, it's just better for everybody. I don't know why everybody wants to live in rebellion against what they know is natural. That's why people get so defensive, because they know they're living in rebellion. Nick, That's your sweater right. is lovely, but uh, gotta, gotta stop hogging the cam. Any, anything right. from Stephen, no bullshit or Theron, any, anything yeah. burning in your gut that you gotta get out? I'm yeah, just kind of I, I, I just have one comment, one or actually just one question. Or she, Theron can go first if you wanted to, or Roaming. No, go ahead, go show about Oh, I, no, I was just curious, Lauren, I'm curious for you, because it's always hard to pin down your beliefs because you like to dance the line so much. Do you think that trans people are unnatural degenerates? Yeah, is that a yes or no? I'm curious. <laughs> do, do I think trans people are unnatural degenerates? Are trans I people do not, unnatural uh, degenerates? I wouldn't say degenerate. I uh, have met very many <laughs> that's all I, that's trans all I people. That's all I wanted to know. I, no, I, 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 I don't believe in the idea that you can change your gender, no. Okay, no. that's all I wanted. <laughs> well, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and chime in there on that awkward moment. Uh, first of all, I love the fact that Brightside Bob or Medicare's picture has been up for like the last half hour on the stream. That's pretty awesome. Those three gay guys are really rocking out. Um, <laughs> thank you, everyone, for coming on, and thanks, uh, Lauren, for inviting me. Last thing I'll say is uh, Richard Spencer watches my videos. He tweets them. Uh, MAGA 2020, it's okay to be white. What? Okay. All right. Well, this was the worst, guys. Thank you so much. This started out so civil. Uh, I had so much promise. Then I haven't, I haven't done it yet. Are you signing? All right. All right. You get one second. You get one minute. I just want to, I just want to go drink wine and cry about not having children, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, it's kind of funny to me because like, which one of you ladies are, which one of any of you are, are engaged? Oh. Uh, work. Well, that's uh, biological savage. imperatives. This oh. is getting real personal. This stream is real getting personal a little, after grilling a her on her natural degeneracy. Now it's personal. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just curious because, like, uh, I'm engaged. I'm soon to get married, and uh, I'm probably going to have children in the next two years. This degenerate that I am, you know, I guess that my I'm just a living example of the fact that um, we all have some natural variation in us. Uh, that and that there's not like this platonic ideal of of what people should be in every point in time until the end of time um, that someone can have this variation here but still satisfy all the other criteria of the natural order um, I can't wait to be a mother and I think I'll be a great mother and fuck you Nick can I oh, just a quick comment can I, I appreciate oh, the conversation boy. I really you do have, I love all of you even Nick 
Except for Mr. Medica, I hate you. But and no bullshit. I hate but you Lauren, too. I hate yeah. you too, Mitchell. Lauren, uh, maybe you too. Roaming even maybe yeah I appreciate the conversation. No, right? and also I also to wanna I, I also and, wanna yeah. apologize. I also wanna <laughs> apologize. I also wanna apologize to uh Rowing Millennial for going so hard and heated off of you because I actually really like you and I think you're really cool. Uh even if I'm like frustrated about a few things and I'm no, sorry about that. No worries. It's it's spicy conversation. A anytime you guys want to talk again, I would be down. Thanks for having us, Lord. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Lauren. No, no. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you, thank you for the wonderful uh, awkward video on my channel. This is just <laughs> wow. And thank you to the chat for partaking. This had so much promise, but uh, I hope it was entertaining. You came on this adventure with us, this complete and utter shit show of a live stream. Be sure to check out uh, ContraPoints, Theron Meyer, Mr. Medoker, No Bullshit, Destiny, Roaming Millennial, and Nick Fuentes on their own channels. They all had their own unique thing to contribute to this. This, that made it entertaining. Uh, as for the rest of you, I hope you all have a wonderful Saturday night. I'm probably never going to do this again, so <laughs> savor this while you can. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Good night.